What's it been like for you to step into Michael Hurst's world of the Vikings? Well, it's been amazing. Uh, when I was asked to do the show, I thought, well, this sounds good, but what exactly is it? And then I watched season one, and I was blown away by season one. And then I read the scripts for season two, and Michael was creating this incredible world and this amazing character for me to step into. And uh, I wonder if it, if it was a bit like how Ron Wood might have felt when he joined the Rolling Stones. It's like you're, you're part of a good thing. <laughs> What have you found interesting about the Viking culture through this show? Well, I mean, my emphasis hasn't been so much on the Viking culture. Uh, my character is very interested in how the Vikings uh, are and what their culture's like. But the most, I suppose, the predominant thing is the difference that they have because of their absolute belief in Valhalla and being willing to die honorably to go to Valhalla makes them fearsome warriors. And there's a wonderful scene in season one where the Vikings land on a beach in Northumbria and they meet a little Saxon army and you can see the difference. One's willing to die and the others aren't and they're going to win. That makes them terrifying and I think they've caught that in the show. What kind of research did you do before stepping into this role? Um, because I'm playing a historical character, I did as much research as I could into the King Egbert, what we know of him. He was very influenced by Charlemagne, so I read a lot about Charlemagne and then as an actor, you do your research and at a certain point you just sort of enter the writer's mind. So that's been my research, is getting more and more involved with Michael and learning what, the way he's relating to it all and starting to, if you like, expand on the theme. Can you give us an idea of what it's like to work on these elaborate sets that they've built here throughout Ireland? It, these sets just completely support what you do as an actor. Because sometimes, if you're in a period piece, you can feel a bit odd and awkward, but you walk onto this it, everything feels so authentic and then Joan Bergen puts you in a costume which feels completely authentic and they do your hair and, you, and suddenly you, you don't have to act it's all there for you you know what I mean it's it's amazing I'm, I'm blown away by the scale of this what are your thoughts on the progression of storytelling we've seen in television especially over the last recent few years I'm completely excited by what's happening on television I mean it's a, a, more than a renaissance it's a golden age of it and uh, long-form television is where it's at right now. You know, that you can tell stories of 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 episodes. And you, as an actor, you can take a character on such a deep journey that you can't do in a movie. So it's an exciting time, because when I started in the business, TV was sort of, sort of frowned upon, you know. So it's an exciting time. One of the trends we're seeing also in television is more and more TV shows of getting their own video games, including at one point Law and Order had its own game. You're kidding. Uh, <laughs> what with the Vikings? Chun Chun, what happened? Yeah, no, there was, no, it was an interactive Law and Order game. Oh, really? They were able to okay. like, solve, play the different roles and solve the cases. Okay. But, but if they were to do a Vikings video game and you were in charge, what would you envision? That's a great question. I'm not a video game person. I, I suppose there would be a lot of um, uh, character role playing, um, actual battle sequences and getting gods on your sides and things like that. Um, and then I think there would be parlays and meetings and political discussions as well. So there'd be a sort of a, a thinking man's game as well as an action game.